morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here is your detailed forecast update for Sunday the 16th of March 2025. A lot to get through to in today's forecast update including heavy showers and thunderstorms leading to some torrential downpours up in far north Queensland. Expecting some flooding to occur up there, showers and thunderstorms extending across tropical parts of Australia as well with tropical cyclones expected to form next week and some wintry weather down in Tasmania has led to some significant rainfall accumulations as well. All of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel please consider subscribing but let's get stuck straight into things this morning up in far north Queensland. Significant rainfall accumulations overnight have led to some minor flooding in the Tully River. Flooding that we were expecting in the uh, Daintree River has not actually eventuated which is really good news indeed. Whilst there were some significant rises to the water levels up there it was a lot drier up in the Daintree rain for us from what we were expecting in yesterday's forecast. Still though a couple of hundred millimetres has fallen up there with the wettest accumulations and pro uh, private weather stations up to about 280 millimetres into the Daintree rain for us overnight and then falls now really beginning to materialise around the Casper Coast and we're expecting some very heavy rainfall through there throughout the remainder of today. Belend and Kerr now going at rainfall rates of about 160 millimetres an hour with much more rainfall expected throughout the remainder of today. Uh, in the last 24 hours, Belend and Kerr, the weather station there, has picked up nearly 200 millimetres and that is rising very rapidly with more rainfall expected throughout the remainder of today. Uh, very significant rainfall accumulations now streaming into the coastline, especially on the northern side of the Cassowary Coast. Some strong thunderstorms now streaming in and you can see just a very heavy line of showers and thunderstorms moving into the area as well. We've got heavy showers and thunderstorms extending south through Innisfail and Tully as well, causing significant rises in the Tully River, which is now very close to approaching the moderate flooding alert, and heavy rainfall now pretty consistent around the Cardwell and the Ingham area through the Cardwell Gap and the Hinchbrook Island area, and the rainfall there beginning to pick up now as well. We're expecting some heavy falls into the Townsville area as well throughout the remainder of today. Let's jump into the forecast models and see what the forecast is suggesting up in far north Queensland. We're using the convective forecast once again, but I will use a normal forecast model as well as a cross-reference. You can see the convective forecast model is calling for these heavy showers to continue, especially around the Cassidy Coast throughout the remainder of today and into uh, this afternoon. Rainfall will pick up again later on this afternoon by the looks of things and into this evening around the Cassidy Coast for a second round of rainfall as very similar to what we were expecting to materialise around the Daintree last night. Uh, that's what we're expecting to materialise tonight around sort of midnight you know, across the Cassidy Coast between Innisfail as far south as about Ingham. Very heavy rainfall expected to materialise in those areas and heavy showers and thunderstorms expected to be prevalent all through later on tonight and then picking up again early tomorrow morning around the Innisfail and the Tully area and heavy showers as far north as about Cooktown and up towards Hopevale as well and some heavy showers also extending as far north as Lockhart River however those showers be sporadic and not really making it to the coastline by the looks of things but solid bands of heavy rainfall expected between Cairns as far south as Air by the looks of things tonight and whilst they will be the most prevalent around the Casper Coast, Innisfail, Tully, Cardwell and Ingham and the Hinchbrook Island area expecting some significant showers be moving through into tomorrow morning and tomorrow afternoon as well as far south as Townsville and into the north Queensland coastline down to the Whit Sundays. The major forecast models as well suggesting a very similar forecast. You can see that heavy rainfall still around the Casper Coast throughout the remainder of this morning and then really picking up tonight in some heavy rain bands that we'll see coming in from the uh, northeast and the east later on tonight around the Tully area, especially out towards the early hours of tomorrow morning. The rainfall sticking around in the Tully area right out through to uh, tomorrow afternoon and then showers here and there uh, through tomorrow evening and in towards Tuesday as well and sporadic showers expected right through Tuesday which will actually get quite heavy at times around the Rollingston and the Townsville area through Tuesday and in towards Wednesday morning as well. But it looks like that rainfall event that we were kind of ifing and umming and uh, uh, ahring about throughout the last couple of forecast updates, that seems to have been completely killed off from the forecast, which is good news. And it was most likely going to happen considering that tropical low in the Gulf of Carpentaria was going to be a really slow developer and not really expected to develop. And you can see the GFS, which has been the most aggressive with the rainfall forecast for parts of Queensland. While some heavy falls are expected through tomorrow, and we could be seeing some heavy rain tomorrow night into early Tuesday morning for the locations between Ingham down towards Mackay, the rainfall is not looking as heavy as what the forecast was once suggesting. Yes, there will be some heavy rainfall here and there and heavy showers are possible throughout Tuesday and in towards Wednesday as well, but we're not expecting three or four days of heavy rainfall down there. I'll come back to North Queensland in just a few moments. I just want to get the rainfall accumulation so far North Queensland out of the way and I'll get to a proper forecast for North Queensland, so bear with me there. In terms of those rainfall accumulations, like I said, on top of the couple of hundred millimetres that has already fallen, yesterday we had accumulations up around that 200 uh, to 300 millimetre mark around Tully and Innisfail, which has led to the minor flooding of the Tully River, and then overnight we've had a further 150 millimetres in those areas and about 200 to 250 millimetres in some areas of the Daintree. We're already starting to see some locations approaching 400 millimetres over the last two days. So the rainfall really starting to build right now. And in terms of the percentage of how much has actually fallen, we're probably only about halfway right now. Some really significant falls are expected tonight. And more rainfall is actually expected to fall tonight because it is going to be covering a large area and around the Cassidy Coast as well, which is about, on a normal occasion, about 30 to 40% wetter than what the Daintree rainforest is. So again, more rainfall 
little is expected tonight. Now, the convective forecast models, I'm going to take with a very heavy pinch of salt today, considering that they aren't actually uh, an accurate representation of where the rainfall is going to be falling. I mean, we've got plenty of rainfall expected up north around the Lockhart River, where only a couple of drops of, well, a couple of significant drops of rainfall can be expected there. And whilst rainfall accumulations will be heavy for brief periods up around the Lockhart River and the Mumba area in very far north and remote Queensland, accumulations up to 300 millimetres are exceedingly unlikely. The number in these areas is probably going to be somewhere between that 20 to 80 millimetre mark. So uh, again, the convective forecast model here might be overestimating slightly. Uh, down towards Cooktown and the Daintree Rainforest, peak accumulations over the next 36 hours expected to be up around that two to 300 millimetre mark. Rainfall accumulations will get heavy again later on tonight into early tomorrow morning, but they're not expected to be torrential and as such rainfall accumulations here are probably being a bit overbaked on the forecast models. Yeah, very much overbaked. And I reckon around the Port Douglas and the Mossman area, rainfall accumulations of around 150 to 200 millimetres over the next 36 hours is a much more plausible forecast. Cairns could see anywhere up to about 150 millimetres over the next 36 hours. They're already starting to see, or they already have seen some heavy bands of rainfall last night. I mean, take a look at this. Uh, at about three or four o'clock in the morning, some very heavy bands moving through the Cairns area, and we've seen some significant rainfall accumulations moving through there. Actually, it was about closer to six o'clock, and unfortunately, it doesn't look like we've got any rainfall observations that I can cross-reference here. But again, some significant falls around the Cairns area, and I'm sure people in the comment section can attest to some heavy rainfall in that area. But yeah, as we head back to the convective forecast models, in fact, let's not, because it looks like the Eastman is actually painting a pretty realistic picture here. We're looking at some very heavy rainfall around the Cassowary Coast, especially for locations south of Fish uh, Fishery Falls and Belen and Kerr through Innisfail and Tully is going to be the hotspot. So in the Tully River catchment here, and I believe just south of Tully, we've got the uh, Murray River as well, or a different Murray River, not the main Murray River that runs through the centre of Australia, but uh, we've got the Tully River here and the Murray River here, and some really significant falls can be expected in the catchment there. Uh, whilst the rainfall won't pan out exactly how the forecast models are suggesting right now, I think that's a, a pointless thing to say, but rainfall is going to be very heavy for certain locations between Belen and Kerr down towards Cardwell, and it is still a bit early to tell considering the majority of this rainfall is going to be coming in and what's likely to develop is a very strong and intense shower band that's going to move into the coast so we're not going to be able to know exactly where the wettest falls are going to be until this shower band actually does develop. We're still expecting the hot zone to be between Innisfail down to about Cardwell so some very heavy falls expected in these areas as well and if I had to put a number on them tonight up to about 400 millimetres can be expected tonight into tomorrow afternoon and then a further 150 to 250 millimetres possible on Monday night and into early Tuesday morning as well so to be honest, 24 hourly accumulations up around that 350 to 400 millimetre mark with 48 hourly accumulations at an absolute maximum up to about 600 millimetres now possible around the Tully area, which would give way to four day rainfall accumulations up to 1000 millimetres in this area if that does materialise around the Tully. And that is, of course, a worst case scenario, but it does go to show how quickly rainfall can accumulate up in far north Queensland. I am actually quite concerned now for the Tully River, and I do actually expect moderate flooding at a very minimum to develop there later on tonight, considering the Tully River, especially just outside of Tully, is still flowing at a high moderate, uh, at a high minor right now. So it is up close to the moderate flooding alert, very close actually, and it hasn't dropped off at all over the last 12 hours. It's been very steady and not dropping off at all. So with this extra rainfall that's going to come in, expecting a very quick rise in the river levels later on tonight, which could push it up towards the moderate or the major. So for those around the Daintree Rainforest, the flood preparations there were definitely on the more unnecessary side, especially if you were in a bit of a kind of grave zone and whereabouts you were. For flood prone locations, I'm sure people were glad that they did prepare adequately for this system, but I think the main threat in the Daintree Rainforest is over, so you can probably breathe a pretty heavy sigh of relief up there. The rainfall certainly caught a few people off guard, that's for sure. But down into the far north Queensland coastline of the, the Cassowary Coast, between Belen and Kerr, down towards Ingham, it is now time if you live in a very flood-prone area, and even down into towards the Herbert River as well, which drains out some of these wetter locations that are going to pick up some significant rainfall. If you do live in the Herbert River catchment, I would recommend getting yourself ready today. Uh, moving stuff up to the to higher parts of your property as well if you've got uh, machinery or equipment in a lower part of your property or down in a river level area whilst we're not expecting major flooding of the Herbert River that's exceedingly unlikely right now and even minor flooding would be a challenge for the Herbert River to achieve we could still be seeing some very significant and sharp rises in water levels in both the Tully and the Herbert Rivers and it's probably time now to start thinking about how you're going to prepare and how you're going to act in terms of that situation there for the majority of locations so all homes and property for the most part should be fine for all intents and purposes this isn't going to be a major catastrophe catastrophic flooding event, but it certainly is worth uh, making those necessary precautions, uh, getting machinery and equipment and livestock off some of the lower levels of your property, just in case the worst case scenario does come into fruition. And whilst we are preparing for the absolute worst at this point, I imagine a lot of far north Queensland would much, would much rather prepare for the worst than wait around and sit around for the best case scenario that might not eventuate uh, up here because the rainfall up in far north Queensland is notorious.
notoriously unpredictable. If you've got any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section down below and I'd be more than happy to help you out as well. If you're unsure of your location and the forecast as well, and if you should be making preparations, give me a description of your situation and let me know in the comments section down below. I'm saying this as a blanket term for those in the worst affected areas that could receive some pretty significant rainfall and some pretty significant impacts tonight because for the most part, especially people in major population centers as well, towns and cities such as Townsville and Cairns, the preparations are complete overkill and absolutely unnecessary. So again, keep that in mind. You know who you're talking about if you live in a really flood prone area, that's for sure. You flood on showers and thunderstorms. Anyways, that is enough talk on Far North Queensland's rainfall situation. Pushing the forecast forward, we do actually have a little bit of rainfall as hinted by the GFS and the Eastern Blue Forecast Model. But again, there, is, there are some discrepancies between the major forecast models. The GFS going ham on some of the rainfall that's going to extend down the North Queensland coastline. And whilst through Monday night into Tuesday morning, I am expecting some heavy showers to materialise along the North Queensland coastline, especially around the uh, uh, Mackay area and into the Whit Sundays, and even out towards the Prospine area, I'm expecting some heavy falls there. We're still not 100% sure what's going to materialise. So, uh, whilst this uh, rainfall is not going to cause flooding and really isn't worth much in the way of airtime, I guess, especially considering it is stock standard stuff for this time of the year, I think we will revisit this in tomorrow morning's forecast update and see what we're expecting around this part of Queensland into the Whit Sundays uh, and see what we're expecting on Tuesday afternoon into Tuesday evening and the same deal with Monday evening as well. I'm not expecting flooding, so there's no need to uh, get concerned and arc up about some flooding on the forecast there, but I do expect some heavy rainfall to materialise from tomorrow night for locations between Townsville as far south as about Serena or St. Lawrence, including Mackay and Proserpine, and some heavy rainfall also expected around the uh, Whit Sundays as well from showers that are going to be streaming in, and we could be seeing some significant rainfall accumulations around the Proserpine area as well, so we can't be ruling out all of those numbers as well. It also looks like the Axis has some heavy rainfall on the forecast as well for Far North Queensland again on Tuesday. There are so much in the way of discrepancies between the forecast up in Far North Queensland right now. It is actually really difficult to make a forecast beyond about the 24-hour period, and I shouldn't be complaining because I'm talking about tropical forecasts right now. Very difficult to give and very difficult to get right, as we saw last night up into the Daintree rainforest, but I am doing my best, and it looks like we're just going to have to take this uh, weather event as it comes. It's typical stuff for Far North Queensland. I know people are no stranger to this stuff. Very heavy rainfall and that up there, and flooding as well for this time of the year. They are no stranger to it whatsoever, but it still is uh, imperative that we give a good and accurate forecast up there, and I do apologize to those locations that are trying to look a little bit further out into the future to absolutely no avail at this point. Very difficult to make that long-range forecast. The dry driver behind a lot of this rainfall is actually a developing tropical low in the Gulf of Carpentaria. You can see it now as we take a look at the satellite imagery. There is a little bit of rotation now starting to develop from a very elongated monsoon trough. You can see those winds beginning to rotate around a very broad but common center uh, offshore from Groot Island and uh, Nullanboy. If I had to put an exact positioning on this low pressure system, it'd actually be outside of Gathala, uh, Gathalala uh, here off the northwestern, uh, northeastern tip of the Northern Territory coastline. Uh, and that tropical low is beginning to develop and round itself out quite nicely. Now, whilst we're not expecting a tropical cyclone to develop out of this, we could be seeing in a brief period a broad uh, tropical low begin to develop, which will then get dragged further inland into the top end of the Northern Territory and across the Northern Territory Queensland border. And that's what's going to be dragging down maybe that heavy rainfall through Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday across the Queensland coastline. We're still not 100% sure because if this tropical low does develop, we'll see some significant rainfall accumulations there. And I think that's what the convective forecast models are kind of banking on. If this tropical low doesn't develop, and again, it's a pretty 50-50 chance at this point, there's no no chance that it gets to tropical cyclone status but again in terms of a little bit more development and a little bit more refinement that will have a major role in how much moisture gets dragged in from the coral sea and at this point it's anyone's guess at this point it's really difficult to say my personal take on it is we will see some further development of this tropical low but it's not going to be anything significant and as such the rainfall is going to reciprocate that it's not going to be anything crazy across the north and the far north queensland coastline through the early couple of days of next week but it, it's still a little bit too early to tell and we'll revisit, revisit this in tomorrow morning's forecast to update and when the forecast models do update later on this afternoon and I see a major change in it I will let you know in a future forecast update later on today but at this point it's not looking awfully likely that we're going to see major changes in the forecast models I'm just looking for a few refinements to make an accurate forecast for tomorrow morning but yeah in terms of the tropical cyclone stance it's not looking likely at all in fact this is looking like a really good weather event to be honest because it is going to spark a few days of showers and thunderstorms into interior parts of the northern territory especially through the later half of this week showers and thunderstorms expected to be widespread across the northern territory and parts of west 
western Queensland. And that's going to give way to some pretty good rainfall accumulations as well. You can see on the convective forecast models here, some healthy accumulations over the next week. Anywhere between that 20 to 80 millimetre mark with heavier falls around the Tennant Creek area, which would be very good news indeed. It will fill up some of the lakes and the creeks in these areas as well. They desperately need the rainfall. And some good rainfall also expected into north Queensland out around the full south and the uh, Croydon and Georgetown area as well, between Mount Isa across towards Townsville, anywhere further north of those, expecting some decent rainfall accumulations, especially later on into the forecast period as well. We could be seeing some good accumulations through Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, and some heavy falls also possible throughout uh, the early parts of this week uh, or this coming week as well. But in terms of tropical cyclone activity, we're going to have to head over west for that. We have had rumbles of activity on the forecast models for the last couple of days, but confusingly enough, they've been completely killed off in the latest forecast runs. Much later on into the forecast period, especially after about the 24th, we are expecting the hot chance of some tropical cyclone development north of the West Australian coastline, and we could see a tropical low head for the WA coastline sometime around the 25th or the 26th of, Jan uh, of January, March. I'm living in the past still. And this tropical low looks like it is unlikely to get up towards tropical cyclone status, at least as per the East Blue forecast, but if it does materialise like this, it will certainly be a bit of a rainmaker. The GFS forecast model is calling for tropical low development as well around the same time from that monsoon trough, but it is really confusing in terms of what actually happens here. It looks like the GFS actually spins up a tropical cyclone that then goes for Indonesia and then might round out around here and then looking at the forecast, extrapolating this heading down towards the West Australian coastline into the first couple of days of April. Again, I think for the West Australian coastline, it's still far too early to tell exactly what is expected up here and that's kind of been the trend with the forecast models over the last couple of days just so much flip-flopping and so much changing we've had runs where the chances of a severe tropical cyclone impact have been highlighted on the forecast models and then runs where the tropical cyclones don't even materialize so there is a massive range of uncertainty right now and that is because we are looking quite long range so in terms of the forecast and my uh, personal prediction on this is with the monsoon trough expected to develop much later on into the week uh, up across the northwestern corners of western australia you're expecting some tropical lows to develop sometime around the 21st out to about the 24th of March. And the Bureau of Meteorology also highlights that in their seven-day tropical cyclone forecast with moderate chances of cyclone activity around the 22nd uh, th uh, or the 23rd of March offshore from the West Australian coastline. But again, it is still far too early to tell and there are major discrepancies between major forecast models. Whilst a tropical cyclone certainly is likely at this point, we're still not 100% sure when and where it will form and its impact for the West Australian coastline. What that means for Western Australia, for locations between Exmouth up to the top end of uh, Columba Roo and Truscott up there in the Kimberley region, you need to remain vigilant. It's this time of the year, of course, tropical cyclone season is at its peak offshore from Western Australia. Remain vigilant, remain on top of the forecast models and keep checking uh, in with forecasters, forecasting agencies and the Bureau of Meteorology over the next couple of days in terms of what is expected on the tropical cyclone forecast. If you're checking with that, you're not going to be caught off guard and you're going to be able to have ample time to prepare. Uh, it, but in terms of getting ready for this tropical cyclone that hasn't even developed yet, we're going to have to wait for a tropical low to form from that monsoon trough, which will be at the end of this week at the absolute earliest, to be able to tell exactly what's expected for West Australia if impacts are possible. So we're not going to have a straight answer of this until about Friday or Saturday. You bet though I'll be giving you the earliest information the second I know about it. If we do get model trends then begin to develop for certain locations, or if we get a model trend developing for a tropical cyclone offshore, then I'll also report on that and make sure that everybody is in the know that this is now becoming a more likely situation. But at this time, it is just far too early to tell, and I think I need to emphasize that point quite a lot. Again, this forecast here for the northwest of Western Australia, the tropical cyclone forecast, is about un as uncertain as a tropical cyclone Alfred forecast when it was stalling and dancing around offshore from the southeast of Brisbane. Uh, in Queensland. It is a very difficult and a very challenging forecast to give as well. So all of the tropical weather stuff has been very difficult over the last couple of days. So again, I do really appreciate all of the support and all of the nice words as well. Checking back in on that rain flap in far north Queensland looking pretty heavy. So again, we've nailed the forecast up there, but beyond that, looking at further, a few, uh, further days out into the future, it is really, really difficult and it's making me scratch my head a lot. That's for sure. Uh, anyway, but in terms of the weather information for today's forecast update, that is all that I have time for. A special shout out of course, the channel sponsors, their names are on screen right now. I could not run the show without them. And again, thank you so much to all of the support over the last couple of days. For those in far north Queensland, if you're confused about the flooding forecast or the rainfall forecast, I completely understand it is a very difficult forecast to give, and as such, it might be confusing. So let me know in the comments section down below, and I'll help you out down there. But that is all for me today, and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.